Hey, are you afraid of power tools? Let's talk about it. Stick around. I'll see you right after this. Look, I get it. Power tools can be scary. That's a legitimate fear. You hear the horror stories and you talk to the guy down the street or on the job site who's missing a finger or a piece of a finger because of some horrible accident using a power tool. And of course, they didn't tell you that they might have been drinking at the time or that it was the first time they used the tool and totally ignored the safety procedures. Now, how many times have you hit your finger with a hammer? I know I've done it a bunch of times and it doesn't feel good, but it didn't make me have an irrational fear of hammers like there may be an irrational fear of power tools. Actually, there's a clinical term and I won't even try to pronounce it, but it is a phobia in respect to power tools. Yes, a phobia. Look it up. They got a word for this. I don't know if it's a joke or not, but there's an actual word for the fear of power tools. Now hitting your finger with a hammer can't be compared to being pulled into a wood chipper of all things, as was the unfortunate fate of a young man. And rightly so, power tools are way more dangerous than hammers. Now, whether you're an accomplished tradesman in the trenches every day, or you're an occasional DIYer, there is no denying the benefits that power tool technology has given you in terms of productivity, speed, and accuracy. But I'm not talking to you necessarily. I know you guys aren't intimidated by power tools at all. I'm speaking to the novice, the ones on the fence, those who shudder at the thought of picking up a drill or a nail gun or any electronically operated device. The ones who suffer in silence as they watch Bill, their next door neighbor, build an extra house in the backyard from the ground up or watch in envy as they watch their other neighbor, Betty, build a motorcycle from scratch in her garage. What a hell to live in. Now, if you're not sure this describes you, I'm going to list the symptoms that those with a chronic fear of power tools exhibit. Now, these may seem humorous to some of you, but they're a very real experience to a lot of people out there. So please respect the less fortunate. Power tool sufferers experience panic attacks. What is a panic attack? Imagine walking down the power tool aisle of your local hardware store. Kind of like what I'm doing here. You may have a sudden episode of intense fear that triggers severe physical reactions when there is no real danger around. You may also experience other physical symptoms like sweating, trembling, chills, or even hot flashes, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, a choking sensation, rapid heartbeat, tightness in the chest, or even pain in the chest, butterflies in the stomach, nausea, dizziness or headaches, feeling faint, dry mouth, a need to go to the bathroom right away, ringing in your ears, a feeling of confusion or being disoriented, hyperventilation, a spike in blood pressure. That's just the physical symptoms. What about mentally? What about the mental symptoms? Fear of losing control, fear of dying, fear of harm or illness, feeling sad or hopeless, feeling disconnected, anger, irritability, mood swings, anxiety, Someone with a chronic fear of tools may experience all of these things or maybe even a few of them, but it's a very real experience and we can't negate someone else's experience, no matter how irrational or silly it may seem. And if we look at the annual stats for power tool injuries, we may find that that fear is not so irrational at all. Every year in the US, power tool injuries result in approximately 400,000 emergency room visits, including work and non-work related incidents. More than 22,000 of these power tool accidents involve workers using nail guns. Now there's a shadowy governmental organization out there. I'm just kidding, it's not shadowy. It's called OSHA. It stands for the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. And it categorizes power tools according to their power source. So you have electric tools, then you have portable abrasive wheel tools. That's tools with the wheel for cutting, grinding, and polishing or buffing. Then you have pneumatic tools. Those are powered by compressed air, such as chippers, drills, hammers, and sanders, among other things. Then you have hydraulic tools, you know, like the hydraulic jacks and so forth. Then you have liquid fuel tools. Those are gas powered tools like chainsaws, concrete saws, and brush cutters. And finally, you have powder actuated tools like the Hilti gun or the Ramset guns. All of these categories of tools have their specific safety risks. 
Electric tools, for instance, they present the risk of electrical burns and shocks. Even a small shock can lead to death and getting shocked from a high place can lead to falls, which can lead to death as well. Abrasive wheel tools can throw off fragments that can injure you in your eyes, your face, and other places. Pneumatic tools also present the risk of flying fragments. Hydraulic tools, they can fail on you, resulting in something coming crashing down and crushing you. Liquid fuel tools, well, that's obvious. If you're dealing with gas, that definitely can burn, explode, or give off noxious fumes. Powder actuated tools, well, think about it. A ramset gun or a Hildy gun is pretty much a gun. It basically has gunpowder in it. So if it's not aimed right, that pellet or casing can ricochet and hit you or something that's flammable causing an explosion or it can hit you directly like a real gun. Okay, the goal is not to scare you any more than you already are talking about the negatives. I'm just letting you know that I understand and I empathize with your concerns as I myself have been injured many times in some form or another by power tools. And it's not always human error at play, even though that's the primary cause of power tool injuries. Other reasons can be a power tool malfunctioning, even when it's periodically maintained. Some tools are defective straight from the manufacturer. You can't foresee when a defective tool will fail on you, which is why proper PPE, otherwise known as personal protective equipment, must be worn at all times to mitigate any risk of injury. In fact, the term power tool should go hand in hand with the term PPE. So here are some tips to keep you from ending up in the ER or even worse, the morgue. Number one, make sure you're wide awake. Using a power tool while drowsy, whether it's from fatigue or medication, is a very bad idea. You're asking for the worst possible outcome. Number two, most power tools have safety switches on them. Don't disable the safety switch until you are using the tool. Many accidents have happened due to ignoring or overlooking this detail. Number three, don't think because you wear glasses that they will protect your eyes from flying debris or fragments. Regular glasses don't block flying fragments from entering from the sides. In that case, your glasses become your enemy because the debris can bounce off the inner lens of the glasses back into your eye. Use goggles instead. Number four, clamp the work down. Use clamps or vices to hold the work in place while working on it. Nothing worse than the work moving around while being worked on. Just like everything else in life, there's a quote unquote good and bad side. Power tools are no exception. Let's stay on the good side by following the rules to the game that will keep us in the game. At the end of the day, this channel was created to dispel any doubts or fears about tools, especially power tools. They can be your best friend as a professional or a DIYer, or they can be your worst enemy.